Okay, so today we are looking at the role of uh, aggregate demand in the Keynesian system. Uh, for the previous model that we looked at, we saw that uh, aggregate demand had no uh, role in the economy. Okay, even if there's a change in uh, aggregate demand, it doesn't affect the output level. Okay. Well, according to the Keynesian, it, it had a rule. So that's what we'll be, we'll be looking at now. So we are moving away from the previous one. And then we want to look at what Keynes will say. Okay. okay, so uh, basically uh, what Keynes did was that he was just trying to counter whatever beliefs that all, all those uh, old economists, uh, they, they believed in. So he was trying to counter uh, all the theories by Adam Smith, uh, Stephen Pigou, I mean, all those people, whatever belief that they had, he had other beliefs, okay? So he, he was just trying to bring out uh, a new form of macroeconomics, which was uh, entirely in contradiction with the view of those old economics, okay? So this, these were some of the issues that he was uh, trying to address. One, uh, the previous model that we looked at, they, they believe that the economy will always automatically adjust to a stable state, okay? So we, they didn't really need the intervention of the government, government expenditure and taxes, couldn't do anything. Okay, so that was seen as uh, one minute. Eh? Oh, yeah. No. Hmm. All right, so I'm sure you can still see the screen. Okay, so uh, uh, they believed in the self-adjusting nature of the economy, okay? And that was one belief that uh, Keynes was trying to... Okay, so uh, why depends on uh, the summation of consumption, investment, and then government expenditure? Consumption was given as autonomous consumption, which is this A, and then the income induced consumption. We call this B, the marginal propensity to consume, and then the white is the disposable income. That's the individual's personal income minus tax. Okay, uh, that's what we have here, minus tax. Okay, and then as I said, investment is autonomous, which means that it is independent of interest rates, and then government expenditure to was taken as autonomous. Here too, we are assuming that tax is autonomous. All these things will change. There are even questions where government expenditure de depends on income. Investment depends on income and then interest rate. Okay. And you know that your tax to the, there can be an income induced tax, uh, the tax rate by the national income. But this is the basic one that we know. So from this, from this, uh, when we saw for Equilibrium, and I'm sure we all know how to do that. When we saw for the equilibrium output, we had our Y star to be this. So what we have in the bracket here, we call it the autonomous expenditure or autonomous spending. And then the one over, how do, do we call the one over one minus B? How do we call the one over one minus B? Uh, in in the Keynesian output uh, determination model, Y star was given as this. Uh, we normally write it one over one minus B times the autonomous spending. How do we call the one over one minus B? Uh, Marvin. Hello. How For the multiplier? Oh, okay. Uh, so so so. You knew it, and I was asking, and you were just there.
Okay, so uh, this is our white star. All right, so this is just an example. Uh, I'm coming. Let's let's use this one. I wrote it somewhere. So the autonomous uh, consumption was given as 120, and then uh, our marginal propensity to consume was 0 0.8, and then we have our di uh, disposable income here. I was 50, Jane was 150, and then the autonomous tax or the lump sum tax was giving us 100, okay? Now, if we want to find our Y star, we just uh, check the, the formula, okay? Y star is equal to, so we are just doing substitution. So where we see a, we put our autonomous consumption there, so 120 minus B, which is 0 0.8, times T0, which is the autonomous tax. Uh, so we have our 100 here. Then we add investment 50, then we add government expenditure, which is 150. Then times one over one minus B, the B is 0 0.8, okay? B is 0 0.8, so that's what we have here. So uh, the one in the bracket becomes 240 and then the K is giving us what five. So when we find the product, we are having 1,200. Okay, so Y star is giving us 1,200. And then uh, there was a question that just assuming that now government expenditure is no more 150. Government expenditure is no more 150, but 200. So we were to uh, find the new level of output, okay? Uh, from, from this equation here, we can use calculus to find the change in Y resulting from the change in any of the autonomous um, components. So what you need to do is, if you want to find the change in output resulting from a change in government expenditure, you differentiate y with respect to gene zero, okay? So changing y, uh, changing y. Changing, okay, so uh, this is what I'm talking about. Changing y should be equal to uh, changing J times the K, okay, times the K. That's when it differentiates Y with respect to J. Mm -hmm. That's what you, you'll be getting. When you do your differentiation, it's supposed to, to be uh, delta Y, delta J, okay? And this will give us the coefficient of J, and this is the coefficient of J. So we we'll have one over one minus B. That's what we are representing by K. So now if we only want to find the change in Y, okay, we just do cross multiplication. So your change in Y, which is the dy, should be equal to the K times your change in G. Okay, so that's what we have, I mean, we have here. So just in case you want to find the change in Y resulting from a change in G, you just bring your change in G here times what? The K. Then the value that you get should be the change in the, the output, okay? So let's, let's look at this. So that's what we're doing here. Now, initially, the government expenditure was 150, but now it has increased to 200. It means that the change is what? It's 50. Government expenditure has just what? Increased by 50 units. Okay, moving from 150 to 200. And then our uh, K, which is a one over one minus B is five. This is one over one minus 0 0.8, which is one over 0 0.2. And that should give us five. Okay, that should give us five. Okay, so now if we want to find the change in Y, it's five, which is our K times the change in G, which is 50. So five times 50 is what, 250. It means that, if the government expenditure should be increased by 50 units, then 
output will increase by 250. So if you want the new output level, you add the old one to the change in Y, resulting from the change in gene. So the change in Y here is for 250. And our Y star is what? Uh, the previous one, the first one was 1,200. So when, when we add the two, we are getting 1,450. So this means that in the Keynesian model, uh, government expenditure, changes in the government expenditure had a real effect, okay? Because we changing uh, Y2 has changed, okay? An increase in G has caused an increase in Y. So it wasn't like the previous model that we we're looking at. This one, whenever there's a change in G, it, it doesn't just change the components of aggregate demand. It uh, really changes the output level, okay? So that is that. I hope we all understand. Yes. Okay. And now there, there was another question that they wanted output level to be 2000. So what should the government do? How should government expenditure change before they can get an output level of 2000? Okay. Initially, the Y was 1,200. So if they wanted to go to 2,000, it means that the change in Y that they are looking for is 2,000 minus 1,200. And that should give us what, 800. And we know that change in Y is equal to the K times the change in J. Now we have been given change in Y, we are rather looking for the change in J. How should government expenditure change before we can get the change in J of 800? And the change in Y of 800, okay? So from this equation here, we make the change in G the subject by dividing through by the K. So when we divide through by K, we are getting change in Y, or a change in G should be equal to change in Y over K, okay? So now that we know the change in Y that we are expecting, we divide it by our K. So 800 divided by five should give us 160. It means that, before the economy can have an output level of 2000, government expenditure should increase by 160 units before the Y will get to um, 2000. So later you can try and prove this. Come and add the 160 to the initial gene value of 150 and go through this process again and find your Y. You see that the Y is 2000, okay, the Y should be 2000, which means that if the economy wants the government, um, the output to move from 1,200 to 2,000, they need to increase their government expenditure by 160 units. Is that okay? Please do you understand? Do we understand? Yes. Okay, you can you can also be asked to uh, calculate for the change in tax that can Hello. yes. Hello. Yeah, Audrey. Say. Yes, I can hear you. You can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, please, I have a question. Okay. Hello. I can hear you. What's your question? Okay, please say. When we did the y is equal to 120 minus um, 0 0.8 into bracket 100, why do we um, put the 100? I don't understand that part, 0 0.8 into bracket 100. Like, the, the why? Formula is my A minus B T 0. 
B times T0. So the 100 is the T0, the tax. And the B is the 0 0.8. So the minus 0 0.8 times 100 is the minus B T0, this part. Are you okay? Okay, I understand. Thank you. Right. Okay, so uh, I'll leave the tax one for you in your spare time. Assuming we want government, uh, the output level to be 2000. I mean, what should be the change in tax just to result in that new level of output okay you can you can try that one um okay right so uh, i hope you can still see the screen Okay, so this is uh, what they were doing here. That is what I wrote on the paper. Okay, so, so that we'll get a better understanding. What, what they are doing down here is for the tax. They didn't finish. So I want you to finish that one now. Look, look for the quantity of tax, uh, the change in tax that can re result in an output level of 2000. Just do it just like we, we did for the government expenditure. Okay, uh, this one, they are trying to look at the effect of an increase in autonomous investment on equilibrium. Uh, for the Keynesian model, if you want to get your Y0, this, this curve here, uh, this is the curve for uh, aggregate expenditure in the economy. We are assuming there's no international trade. So the total expenditure should be the summation of the expenditures by the two, uh, by all the economic units, the individuals, the firms, and then uh, the government, okay? Then this is our 45 degrees line. So where these two lines uh, touch across each other, that, that is supposed to give us our output level. So if there's an increase in investment, okay? An increase in investment will cause an upward shift in the aggregate expenditure Curve, okay, so uh, the vertical distance between the new and the old curve measures the change in investment. And this is going to cause uh, an increase in output because now the 45 degrees line will cross the expenditure line at a higher uh, point as compared to the previous one. So this means that whenever there's an increase in government uh, in investment, uh, it will re result in higher output. We can do the same for government expenditure. That one to cause an upward shift in the aggregate expenditure curve, and that one to result in higher expenditure and higher output. The, the diagram that we have here, this is uh, using the uh, injections and the leakages approach. 